Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to a survival news show. I told you guys I was going to be holiday, so I wouldn't be maybe around much, but of course survival news never stops. I've squeezed this one in mainly because there's some big issues we've got to talk about, mainly ARK. Now I was going to do this in a separate video, but I'm sick or tired of talking about negative stuff with games, devoting whole videos to it. So I'd rather just go through it a little bit and then go through the rest of the survival news, which I think is pretty good, including Conan Exiles being free to play. We're also going to be going over some stuff to do with Scum, Subnormal, our brand new updates green hell and daisy 1.08 looks like it's going to be arriving very very soon and also some more details about last oasis so as ever the home of survival is my channel xbox playstation or pc i'll be there first to give you guys that news and information but yeah skip ahead the timestamps are in the comment section if you don't want to see the next 10 minutes of me pretty much blaring arc out for their failed update they went with yesterday trying to celebrate summer it kind of broke the game for a lot of console players it's all here let's go it's the survival show so of course the arc summer bash started last night console users you would have got it about 9 9 30 pm in the uk Things didn't look like they were going to be going well when they announced their disabling transfers on console as they investigate an issue related to aberration variant dinosaurs. And it got worse and worse. I woke up to just a bunch of messages and ads. You guys all complaining that you've either lost your complete saves on Xbox, some of you guys, or the majority of you just can't actually find any of your creatures. Lots of your dinosaurs are just simply disappeared or missing. Not to mention a bunch of issues as well with animations not working correctly. Really derpy stuff going on. And a bunch of crashes all over on the official network. Dolly, the live ops community manager, put this piece of info out. A core piece of game data was corrupted in the latest patch, which resulted in various issues, including the loss of some aberration creatures, primarily aberrant variants, incorrect animations, missing item info, and more. We're currently working on server-side fix for both Xbox and PlayStation 4. We expect the hotfix will be ready in approximately four hours, giving all go smoothly. With the deployment of the hotfix, we'll be conducting a service-wide rollback on our official Xbox and PS4 servers to the point of initial deployment. So players can expect a rollback of approximately eight or so hours by the time we actually deploy to fix. However, an aspect of this fix requires a client update, which we aim to get through certification as quickly as possible. In in the rim, players will experience some oddities such as creatures, the ones which were temporarily lost appearing as invisible. We understand this isn't ideal, but we feel rolling back as quickly as possible and deploying the server-side fixes minimizes disturbance to your game time. We apologize for this inconvenience. We're excited to get this event into your hands. We'll be extending the Summer Bash 2020 so everyone has the opportunity to fully enjoy it. Thanks for your patience. Fuck a duck, wildcard. Like, Honestly, I have lost count how many times I've got to say this. Fucking test your shit a little bit more. How hard is it? Now, if you think I'm being overdramatic, I promise you, I promise you, if you go through the ARC official proper channel on Twitter, pretty much every single event they've done for the last 18 months, two years has been broken. And not just broken in a minor way, like one item's not working, or there's a few glitches with a certain skin or an emote or something. We're talking about major stuff where people are experiencing stuff like loss of data, corrupted saves, worlds being wiped. The birthday one wasn't as bad, apart from the fact obviously lots of players were unhappy that they didn't get breeding rates properly, although that has been explained by Wildcard recently. During the Easter event, it was people not being able to connect to servers. There was a whole bunch of issues, huge amount of problems on official servers in regards to lag. And if you go on and on, I can promise you now, I'll find a bunch of problems that only arose every time they've done one of these updates that have an event. Probably the worst version was the Christmas event that had just a bunch of issues and problems. It pretty much stopped people being able to host their own events despite whatever event it is they wanted. They got rid of a bunch of items and didn't give anyone too much warning about cosmetic items just disappearing and more. It's just in crazy and incredible. A company that's got this game going for five years still manages to fuck up so badly. And unless you follow them on Twitter, you wouldn't have a clue. You'd been playing the last eight hours on official and then wondering why it's been rolled back because they never put any notices out on the actual game platforms themselves and rarely do they put it even on the actual proper community forums. Get good wildcard. Now don't get me wrong, we all know Ark's a complicated game. It's got so much in it, covering three platforms, it must be really hard to make sure that every single thing works. But realistically, when you're putting an event in, 
How hard is it just to add some skins? Can it really be causing this many problems? It's clear wildcards aren't testing this stuff out thoroughly. They need to invest in their QA, something everyone's been saying for years, me included. I don't want to go on too much of a rant, I probably have already, but ever since they cut ties with the port team that pretty much bought Ark to consoles properly and fixed a lot of the problems with the versions that were running on consoles, everything they do with console just seems to be that little bit worse. So that was six hours ago, there's still no end in sight. Dolly has confirmed that if you had anything in the last 24 hours in upload, you pre pretty much have gone to have lost that character and any items or dinosaurs. Now there is a way that you can sometimes get characters back, but you'll need to write a support ticket for that on the forums. And possibly some dinosaurs if you can show your tribe logs. This is why you've always got to take screenshots before you do any sort of official server transfers. But the whole fix could go on for much longer. They still haven't got a proper ETA of when they're gonna do this rollback. All in all, it's a really shit show. Now, if you think I'm being a little bit harsh, there are plenty of other games that are using lots of console help to make sure that service updates like these don't necessarily break the game. And I'm talking about some really, really poor games that have had real problems on console. DayZ, pretty much one of the worst port jobs you've seen on a console for the price it was. Loved as it is, Things got so bad, they have started doing experimental servers on Xbox One, meaning that they can test stuff more thoroughly and make sure that the stuff is going to be a little bit more stable before pushing it out to main. Space Engineers, another game that received pretty bad reception on Xbox when it launched, mainly because of its multiplayer capabilities, the fact that you couldn't really play too much of it with your friends. They've also implemented their own special beta branch as well for the Xbox One. PUBG's had it for ages, Sea of Thieves has it, Microsoft and Minecraft obviously have it, but these companies are a little bit bigger. But you get the idea. If we can have games like Space Engineers and DayZ running proper servers, test servers on console, why the hell can't Ark do it? Even combined, Ark has sold more copies than Space Engineers and DayZ on a console version. It might not be something they could do on a PlayStation 4, but yeah, I can't see why they can't start implementing some of this stuff on Xbox. The theory goes that they're trying to be more of a live service, and this means that sometimes they really can't test the stuff until it goes live to everyone. Sure, they'll test and implement some of the new items, make sure the skins are not clipping, and they've got the right descriptions, and they're doing the right job. And if you've ever played a game of Destiny or something like that, then obviously you'll understand that when problems do go on, it can mean hours of downtime while they're readjusting or updating every few weeks or every month. But that's gotta be a better state of affairs, to have downtime for a few hours like most games do, rather than what Wildcard do, which is just push updates and don't give a fuck if it's actually broken or not. And I mean Wildcard plural here. I'm not blaming any single one of their devs or their community team. They've just got to deal with the shit show that happens afterwards. It's their big managers that make these decisions, and they're the guys that need to dig deep into their pockets and start actually hiring more QA testers, devise some plan with the console platforms that have the most issues, some way to test it, or get another port team back involved to help them. Even on Steam, where you can pretty much throw up test servers for whatever reason you want and it's completely almost free, Wildcard have barely done it in the last few years. Literally only a handful of times have they ever tested something before updating it or bringing it to the game. It's a crazy state of affairs. I thought Wildcard were getting a bit better. They managed to poach a lot of the community team from Atlas. They've got their own brand new team over on Atlas now. And it means we've finally got someone that actually takes care of live ops and lets us know a little bit more information about how the game is actually running. But until the management actually pull their finger out of their ass and fix these issues, we're going to continue seeing these problems and it's usually console fans that suffer. Maybe I should have started with this as well. If you're on single player, don't load up your game at all. Just leave it alone, play something else for the next 24 hours. And some of you guys have been wondering how, why it's so expensive to get the jerky which you need for some of the stuff of the Summer Bash. But well, they're gonna be reducing the cost of Prime Jerky for Summer Bash items in the evening. So I wouldn't necessarily spend, if you are still somehow playing the game, don't be buying any chibis just yet. Wait until the fix has come in and it's reduced the cost of it. The fact this update's gone out on a Friday is also bad news because it might mean it doesn't get resolved till Monday. Microsoft and Sony often do hot fixes at short notice if there is a major problem, and so they can sometimes turn it around within around 24 hours. But at the weekends, they've been a little bit more militant in recent years, meaning that you can't necessarily update the game over the weekends as much as you used to. 
Best way to stay informed is join my Discord and be in the ARC general chat. We'll post anything in there we find and we'll keep you guys up to date what's going on if you're not really a fan of Twitter or following loads of different people. Now let's move on to some, maybe some good news. Chiron Fire broke the news to me, at least anyway, that Conan Exiles was going to be free to play on the Epic Games Store coming very soon. July the 2nd to July the 9th, just like Ark was, you'd be able to pick up Conan for free on that platform. Again, it's great news, means a nice little boost to people that do Conan Exiles content more regularly, and hopefully it means getting even more interest in this game. It does explain now why they've been having so many issues themselves. Funcom have got their own launcher they've been testing, and they've got their own friend system, and now it's become apparent why. Just like I told you guys last week, I said that Funcom were working on crossplay, and it turns out I was right. Now, before we get too excited, it doesn't mean it's going to be Xbox and PlayStation to PC. At the moment, it's looking likely it's just going to be Steam and Epic Games, but you never say never. Natasha, one of the lead community managers over on Funcom, did reply back to me yesterday asking about crossplay. And it has been confirmed it will be available between Steam and Epic Game Store. Now, Art Survival Evolved have their own separate servers for this. And if you plan on unofficial servers, you can enable it. Obviously, the big one with Arc is that people on the Epic Game Store won't be able to play on servers that have mods enabled. I'm going to guess and say it could be the same situation on Conan, but that's not been confirmed yet. And I'm going to guess there will be just maybe separate servers that have Epic Games Store and PC servers connected. But again, that's not 100% confirmed. Natasha just said crossplay between Steam and EGS players will be possible with the EGS launch. Oh yeah, by the way, Conan, another company that does actual proper testing with all their stuff. Don't get me wrong, they still bugger it up sometimes. And like I said, they've had problems in the last couple of weeks too. But they definitely get it wrong a lot less than Arc do in terms of testing and bringing out updates. Still no news about a brand new map. And as much as I would like a brand new DLC to come out alongside Conan, because it's the one game that probably definitely needs a new area to explore, I don't think it's going to be necessarily coming out just next week. They'll probably want to build up the hype and announce stuff properly. I'm really hoping it's still going to be late summer, maybe early autumn, that they do have the brand new content. If it's any later than that, then damn. I'm going to be a busy boy with all the new launches of the new systems and new games to play. So yeah, make sure you pick up Conan Exiles. June, July the 2nd, definitely worth your time. I think it should go without saying there's going to be no mod support. Again, I presume it's going to be like the ARC launch. You never know though, it's a different company. They may have struck another kind of deal to have access to the mods. And it is something that ARC said they wanted to bring in in the future. So maybe Conan will beat them to it. But as far as I know, no mods on the Epic Game Store version. In April last year when it went on the PlayStation 4, it ended up being one of my best months ever on the channel. And while I doubt that it's going to have the same impact because placed PC tends to have a lot more sales and people have picked up Conan Exiles a lot more, I still think it'll have probably a big impact on me as well as lots of other good content creators showcasing Conan. Just like my good friend Kyron Fire who's been helping me out do art content on my channel. Well her main is obviously Conan Exiles. So if you want a clue about this game, not really played it too much, go and check out her channel. She's got loads of good starter guides, a bunch of new stuff as well. Or, you know, you can go through my playlists and find some Conan content too. I've done a few videos. Subnormal Card Below Zero got a new update last night, Salad Days. The latest update is coming pretty quick and fast for this game now. A brand new area to explore, lots of new locations. They've also got lots of habitat add-ons. You can now grow much more items. You've got this Delta Station, a bit of a frosty place to go. The Outpost a Mega looks pretty cool. And they've got a new way to open up the Spires Bridge. You can pretty much repair it and they say you're going to get to the Glacial Forest. And you've also got the Deep Purple Veins, as you saw there. Got more new items. You can recycle some of your tools now, which is really cool. Got radio tower to put up as well and you will discover new things like the ice worm boneyard and snow stalkers if they're babies they'll be attracted to your torches or lights but uh, be careful they can still do a lot of damage to you so yeah it looks really cool again still no news about it's come to console i'm really am not predicting it to come until the game is ready 1.0 that's what they've said so no seller days for console yet but go and try it out if you've got it on pc Scum's got brand new traps coming to the game, including fireworks alarm, flare alarm, and silent alarm. You'll be able to activate these by finding a mobile phone in the game. 
It may be not got alerts coming to you like Ark and Rust have, but maybe it will be something they'll put into the game eventually. They've also added practice bombs so you can get used to dismantling them and a lockpicking board as well. So again, you can practice your skills without using your trusty toothpicks. New coffee added to the game as well. A bunch of new admin commands, multipliers for private servers and a hell of a lot of bug fixes and stuff. Again, Scum is doing all the right things, constant updates, nice big patch notes and going about early access the right way. Now I told you guys about Last Oasis having their brand new update, the Volcanic update. Well they finally released a trailer for it a day later and it has gone on sale on the Steam store. The summer sale is obviously around for a lot of games so I reckon you should definitely pick up Last Oasis if you're a fan of PvP. A new Domus Walker is pretty much a house on legs. It's going to be able to hold and protect a bunch of players unlike their previous one the Mollusk which was kind of designed only for maybe one or two people. This one's much, much bigger. So it's good to see they're really going out there with different walkers and they plan to add many more of these. They've also got their brand new creature, the Killing. You will be able to grapple onto this flying badass while trying to take it down with maybe a ballista. Apparently it's going to be a good way to get loads of feathers. And the brand new volcanic biome, they've swapped and moved stuff around from some of their other maps and this is the only place that you can now get lava or specifically I think obsidian from it. The lava is of course now dangerous, so don't be stepping on it when it's here. You will have to pour a lot more water on it to cool it down for it to transform into obsidian now. And they've added furniture packs into the game as well, much needed decorative items as well as chairs and stuff like that. And I think that definitely helps with the roleplay aspect. They've got brand new explosive ammo and a bunch of new weapons, all I guess crafted from some of that lava stuff. And they've changed the reserved server slots for proxy owners. So if you own a proxy, no matter what, you'll always be able to get some of your team onto your map in case a bigger tribe is trying to block you out. It's one of the big criticisms and problems with Last Oasis. If you're part of a mega tribe, you can pretty much just fill a server up when you go and attack it with only your members, meaning that no one else can join that server. So hopefully this helps resolve that issue. In Hell got a small little update as well, adding on to the co-op story multiplayer update they added a little week ago or so. This new one adds more stands for you to carry and show your, some of your items and resources. New bed type, banana leaf bed, and you can now convert your single player saves to multiplayer saves, which is good stuff. It's pretty annoying in the forest that you can't do that similar thing. So I'm glad they've done this and fixed it. Although be warned, you won't be able to turn it back into just a single player world once you've done this. Bunch of other fixes as well, and it's looking more good stuff from Green Hill. I'm still not expecting this game to come out until at least Christmas time. On Xbox and PlayStation anyway. Speaking of DayZ, a little bit earlier, 1.08 update is looking likely to launch on the PlayStation 4 very soon, as well as come out out of beta or experimental on the Xbox and PC. Another update adds a bunch of fixes and changes some of the stuff in it. And I've been going with this for a couple of weeks now. So I'm fully expecting him to say that it's going to be launching in the next week or so. So everyone on all systems will be able to play it. And finishing off with Sid or Forge with Fire is going to be free to play this weekend on the PlayStation 4 for three days, obviously. That's what a weekend kind of is, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. <sighs> and it's got a brand new update. The God's King Vengeance went live on the 23rd. I told you guys about it. It adds the second part of their story. And I do believe the major content they've had planned for this year to really wrap stuff up. So it's meant to add some more NPCs, more enemy types, more unique endgame bosses as well. So it might be a time to revisit it. Let me know if you do. And like I said, it's free to play this weekend only on PlayStation 4 if you want to give it a try for yourself. As ever, I'll be back very soon with the survival news. But I am. I mean it. I'm on all day now. You will see pre-recorded content all next weekend or for this weekend and a few more days after that. And I'll be back some point next week, unless something really big happens. Until then, rat bags, laters.